call the meeting to order city of university Heights city no. council meeting it's july 9th 2024 and uh i call the meeting to order uh all five council are present and first order of business approval of minutes june 11th 2024 are there any additions or corrections to the minutes hearing none the minutes are approved by unanimous consent public input um, would anyone from the public like to speak right now? Okay, we'll go on. And then uh, first order of business under mayor's report is consideration of resolution 2433, approving an amended PUD site plan for Hotel 901 LLC at 901 Melrose Avenue. And so I know that the hotel membership is here, leadership is here tonight and uh, wants to present the parking site plan and who's going to, oh, speak. Okay, Greg, Greg is coming in and uh, and you have the site plan up for the board too. Hi, Greg. Instead of signing in, why don't you come to the podium? You can sign in later. Thank you. And so we're already on the um, on the uh, HUD site plan. Well, it's actually 701. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and so thanks for coming. So you wanted to present the site plan. Yes. Yeah, so um, just pop up here. Yeah. Let me know which page you want to go to. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to do this one. Okay. Um, so, I had a refresher of last week. We're turning these parking spots here. They're currently perpendicular. And we're turning them 90 degrees and making them parallel. Uh, okay, they're parallel, making them perpendicular. And we're putting in these islands here, as you can see. Um, so we are taking away some space here and then putting in islands to add in space. Um, with some comments that we may want to take the light poles from on top of the wall and put them in the green space here, which we're a thousand percent okay with that. That would move the lights closer to the hotel and down some. They take some light away from the residents. Is good. Um, on this side, we are this this parking right here um, is uh, pull that one. So right now, this parking right here is parallel, and we're turning that ninety degrees and making it now perpendicular. And we're taking a little green space right here and pushing the. This is this is. What it looks like currently, but we're actually moving it that way a little more. We're taking a little green space here and moving it um, farther that way uh, so we can have enough drive aisle here um, to keep the, the drive aisle 24, 24 feet. Right? Yeah. So um, that's about it. Um, keeping the side block at seven feet. Right here, which gives pedestrians plenty of room to walk. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it, it, it adds up about 20, adds up to 25 parking places, which we desperately need. Okay. Uh, any questions right now for Craig on that? We'll, we'll have plenty of time for yeah. questions too. Okay. Ryan had added a comment that you could have um, hung the parking over the sidewalk on the west side by two feet and reduce the parking stall to 16 feet. Yeah. So you didn't want to do that? I, yeah, just I went out and I put the tape measure on my truck to the front of the front tire, the back of my vehicle, and it was 18 feet. And then I went to my other truck. And Measure from the front of the front tire, not the front bumper, but the front of the front tire, but the back of my truck, and it was 20 feet. And I was like, oh, if we need that, 
uh, the 16 foot rule with that <coughs> three to four feet of vehicles kicking out into the drive aisle that we're trying to have two way traffic on. And uh, that was, that was something four feet out. I thought it would be intrusive to people driving and potentially get hit. Um, you know, if they're driving that close to the back of the system. Um, I just, I was hoping those would maybe not have to do that. Um, we can make the sidewalk much smaller. Um, that would keep the drive the, the space of the vehicles to have enough room to make the sidewalk much smaller. So we got a one four feet, I think, is what Brian wants to do. Four feet is smaller. Uh, I mean, so seven, well, five foot would be the typical minimum. That would be five foot would be our typical minimum, but when you're going to have a parking vehicle overhang it, seven foot is that minimum because those big trucks you're talking about will overhang by two feet. So we don't want to have a five foot wide sidewalk that's going to be reduced to three foot wide because then it it might as well just not be there. Basically, it wouldn't be ADA accessible for a wheelchair or anything to get past the wall you know, at that point. Which is why, compared to the plan that I think was sent out uh, at the before the last meeting, this one here has got um, pretty well the same layout, except for it's a seven foot sidewalk instead of a five foot wide sidewalk, which is something I did request of, of Greg and, and MMS to make that change. And like Tim was saying, I had proposed that they just reduce the length of the parking stalls to 16 feet and make the curb five inches tall to allow uh, low profile vehicles to overhang, to encourage over overhang on the sidewalk um, to make up for that shorter stall depth. Uh, but they were concerned about the length of the vehicles. So they decided, elected to go with the uh, full 18 foot depth on the stalls and then the seven foot sidewalk, which you know, results in the wall being pushed that to an extra feet to the west compared to what was shown last month. Yeah. The typical parking structure is 60 foot clear, and you don't have that opportunity to overhang. Right. And there are trucks that hang out into the aisle, but you maneuver around them. And it would be to save a little green space, it would be nice to. Make a slight compromise and maybe reduce it by a quarter versus a third. Um, I, I, well, 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 I, I went over and measured our hotel and floor room, and the sidewalks there are five or six with the vehicles hanging in, and almost everything. If, if it's a typical car, it takes up about 18 inches to two feet. So we pretty much had always 42 inches in space with, with a five foot six sidewalk. So maybe we could reduce the six foot or something like that on the sidewalk and still accommodate everything. I mean, I can. Whatever council would want to consider, I can review that. I guess I wouldn't probably make a decision right here tonight on yeah. that. But. Well, so we, we just had a baseball tournament tournament here, though. And yes, we've been staying at the last couple weeks. And a lot of SUVs, a lot of pickup trucks, and a lot of kids. You know, so that's that's really the vehicles that we're dealing with. I mean, we're not really dealing with combat cars, which with the 16 foot would be great for that. But uh, that typically is not what's going on at the hotel. So I'd much rather accommodate, you know, if the bigger vehicles and be, be ready for them to when squeeze everybody in. Ryan, do you, do you have any sense of the green space lost from this change? Square footage of green space? I have that. It's on the sheet. <clears throat> what is that? I uh, had John Warren and that's figured out about 3,200 square foot difference. Uh, it looks like it's 8,000. What's that? 8,000 square feet. <clears throat> so what he sent me was a text that said, we currently have 10,000 square feet out there now. Oh, you're talking behind the wall specifically? 
How much? Are you I'm just talking about net islands yeah. in general. So, so the plan at the top, right? Um, it, it lists the green space in the paving area. So the green space it shows existing conditions and proposed. So it's about eight thousand eighty two hundred square feet reduced green space from 40, 43,300 or almost 400 to 35,100 square feet, which is a, it looks like it's five and a half percent or something. Yeah. Trying to get so on the wall itself, the thing you got plugged in, yeah. you calculate 10,000 on the wall itself. Uh, I don't know what's behind the wall. I guess no. This this is just I'm just using the numbers that MMS provided up here. So it'd be that this table here that just just says development characteristics. So the existing and proposed, and you can see green space area. This is you're adding some green space, right? Yeah, in the parking lot. Space. That's what I saw today. We're adding green space island side. So that's a net because it takes into account before and after. Yeah. I, I think that's what you're asking. For. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I explained in my report, and Jim and I have had some conversations. That I'm looking for a more comprehensive plan, you know, for me to support it. I don't like the annual, like chipping away, changing. Um, it seems like there's a lot of opportunity. And Jim and I talked about this with the entrance way, just making that look better, preserving green, green space, but maybe <laughs> shifting it around. And you know, I think it seems obvious with just the look of the entryway that that rental house that you guys own is probably going to be parking at some point. And it just seems like instead of doing this piecemeal, it'd be good to have a comprehensive plan that has a better, you know, aesthetic, has better aesthetics. But then also I'm looking at that net green space, you know, situation. And I think there's potential there um to add spaces but you know and i i i want to work with you on this and i and i really as jim knows put in a lot of time trying to think about different options but i mean for the reasons in my report it, it does seem like we're we're paving more for presumably largely especially when you consider the, the hospital parking issue for tailgating which you know, again, I'm not trying to judge that one way or the other. I'm just really trying to make it look aesthetically more pleasing. I, I don't know if you read the, the city council materials, but when you kind of put together the idea that you guys are giving, you know, having people from the hospital parking spaces during the hours that they park at the hospital, right, for the hospital, and then you have Kinnick open on the other off hours, it just seems like those two things put together um, kind of put into question the idea of the need for parking. But again, you know, if, if we are looking at increasing parking, I just am wanting to see a more comprehensive proposal that takes into account, you know, number one, what parking you want to add. Number two, I think the aesthetics from Melrose especially, you know, Jim and I talked about a lot of hotels you kind of drive into, and it's somewhat grand, you know, somewhat visually appealing. And, and when you drive into the, the Marriott, you got the rental house kind of staring you right there in the face. Um, and there's a lot of pavement around that. And so, I mean, I think there's potential to make this all look better, honestly, and, and potentially to increase parking too at the same time. So that's what I at least would want to entertain I know I'm only one council member, but that's what I would want to entertain is seeing what that all looks like. Um, and I think Do you have an option. I don't mean to. I think Tim had, you know, looked at some of the options for the green space, but I no, I mean I'm not, I'm not in the the business of drawing it up for you. But I think you guys understand the general parameters. I mean, I'm going to be looking I mean, again. I'm just one person, but I'm going to be looking at the that green space. Um, you know, I think there's also interest from the community members that I've communicated with, you know, that if we could get you the parking you need um, in a way that's aesthetically pleasing and that there's green space left over, I think there's also interest in that green space being signed over to the city because I think there's a real lack of trust just because of how this has been kind of a, a, a thing that 
you know, has, has really been changed based on a lot of residents' expectations. And again, I'm not saying they're all your fault. You know, yet the pandemic occurred, your restaurant person pulled out, I get that. Um, you're trying to make an event space work, I get that. But that is, that restaurant space was the local amenity, I think that a lot of people were looking at as a benefit to the city. Whereas, you know, event space, maybe they get invited to a wedding there, you know, or go to a political event or something like that. But, you know, I, I have to look at it. I feel like my role as a city council member is to look at it as an advocate for the city and for the residents. And they also have an, have an interest to be reasonable with you guys, right? So it's not that I'm saying their interest is just to fight you on all this. I'm just saying, it seems like instead of doing this piecemeal, we have an opportunity to come up with an idea that not too complicated, you know, in, in design would probably provide some green space buffer, you know, maybe some parking where the, the rental house is, maybe some parking where you guys are talking about. Um, I just haven't seen that, any, anything close to that that I can talk about. And so that's where, as an advocate for the residents, I just don't see how getting rid of this much green space is consistent with what I hear this people in the city want at this point. I mean, I guess the last thing I'll say is this, you know, this was a previously negotiated issue, you know, in terms of how much green space there would be. Um, you know, again, I know circumstances have changed with an event space instead of a restaurant and the, the needs for parking are different. And so that's why I would say, okay, if we need more parking, let's just make it, let's do it all now. I know it might involve zoning changes, but I would rather honestly get behind a zoning change now if it were part of a comprehensive plan to make it all look better and to provide the parking that you guys need. So that's my two cents. When COVID happened, we were struggling to find something to go up there, and we didn't have a lot of options. Um, so that space was really the only option we could come up with at the time. Um, when we brought it to the city council for that, we really didn't. It was an oversight on our part. Um, we didn't realize how much parking we need here. Uh, we have 166 spots upstairs in an outside spot. It takes 140 rooms away. That leaves us 26 spots for a 500 capacity, 500 person capacity event center. We have 26 parking spots. The need for parking is. It's there. It's, it really is truly there. Um, when we, we, we did the huge oversight on our part, when we, we turned it into an event center, that we didn't ask them for more parking. We didn't. It's only been open for, well, I know we were open yet. But, yeah, we weren't even open yet. And so we didn't know. I, I trust you on the idea that event center space requires more parking than restaurant, especially when you have big events where everyone needs to be there at once. I think that the fact that Kinnick is there with empty, open to the public parking um, during certain hours and that during the other hours, you're parking hospital workers in some of your spaces. I think that erodes your argument. Um, However, even if you're just saying, hey, we just want more parking, I'm saying I would just like the comprehensive plan that shows your entrance, that shows some green space, preserves some green space. Um, so I hear you on that. I'm just I'm just giving you my feedback in terms of the way I look at it. And you don't mind me reminding me. Right, because I was on that council when you came to talk about having an event center. We did talk about continuing to look for someone for a restaurant. I just want to throw that out. So that may be why you didn't talk about more parking at that point. And I get that you need more parking, but I have trouble relying on this is going to be the end of it. You're not going to have enough for the event center. You're not talking about undoing the hospital parking. So I'm 
kind of getting in the corner of an overall plan so we know really what we're looking at instead of the hospital parking. So you don't have any events during the day? We have some events during the day, but that's a neat point because the people that are staying at the hotel, they leave. I think there's plenty of parking. Off hours. Hannah, yeah. is there off hours? And I still have maintained, I mean, you are never going, unless you have a plan that we're unaware of, you're never going to have enough it's, parking. It's, it's for the nice events. and weekends. It's, 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 it's nice and weekends. You struggle with parking all the time, frankly. You don't struggle during the day with during the daytime parking. Well, you're limited to 25 daytime parking, correct? 25 too. That's, that's, that's a, we could, we could easily put way more in it. We could just don't, so that's worth the number of 25. The Kinnick lot is open during the nights and weekends unless there's a football game. Yes, yeah, we should talk about people that come to weddings, talking about grandmas and grandpas, and we can ask them to walk them over there. It's, it's, it's a convenience thing. No longer like, okay, well, I'm going to have my wedding there, I'm going to have all my family come. Well, you got to park across the street. It, it just seems if we can find more parking, then it has to be to help. There's been formal events that people are walking barefoot from County Stadium to the shoes of the community because of the high heel that the current you know, thanks. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm Randy Lada. At the courtyard. But I work a lot of the parking and seeing the people struggling to walk across the street. And in the pouring rain, snow's gone. And I'm just going to stand. It's a long walk. So, yeah, like I said, I, I'm kind of taking that for granted too. I mean, I, I still haven't seen anything close to a comprehensive plan yet. And that's where. Like Lisa is saying, I mean, I still, I still think there's a lot of opportunity where that, that house is. I mean, I think everyone kind of assumes that's going at some point, you know, for parking. And so it just, and I know that, yeah, I think it would be reasonable to say, well, city council, like, well, that's going to be a zoning change. And so that's going to take more time. But honestly, again, if it were part of a comprehensive plan, and if we're in agreement with it, everybody's behind it, it wouldn't seem like that would be um, an insurmountable challenge. It's just, you know, it's it's just that I I think as a as an advocate for the residents, it just this looks like piecemeal stuff. Sorry. Yeah, that's <laughs> Sorry. I mean, we I've had several residents suggest a shuttle. Why not have a shuttle that you run back and forth from wherever? When we know, and that's Kelly Murphy, Director Shell. Sorry, I'm not going to jump in. But part of this, there are so many moving pieces. So there are lots of times during the day that we are full of parking. We've talked about you know, the, the hospital part workers that park there. Some of them work overnight, some of them work during the day, some of them work weekends, some of them don't. But we have talked collectively as a team, the management team. I don't know that Greg's been part of that, but you know, do we have the option on the days that we know we're going to be full and we need those parking spaces? Can we move those parkers back to um, Woodside? So it has been part of the conversation, but we're you know just three years old, and our business needs have really changed. Having up to several hotels in my career. Kelly, could you come up yeah, to the sorry. podium? I think everybody sorry. could hear you better. Sorry. Thank you. But like five years uh, is pretty average, pretty standard for a hotel, for a whole service hotel to be what we call ramped up. So we're still finding where our pieces of business are when we're busy, when we're not busy. But part of it as, you know, just as one example. So let's say we've got a guest that's staying. Let's say they're staying tonight and they're a hospital guest and they're staying for one night well they may check out of their room by 10 o'clock or by noon tomorrow 
But if their appointment at the university isn't until two, three, four o'clock, they expect that they can keep their car at the parking lot. So um, there's lots of overlaps. There's lots of moving parts within the pieces of business or the segments of business that we currently have and that we're also going after. So there's not like there's not one clear cut answer as to when we're going to be full, when we're not going to be full on the parking side because there's so many moving parts in it. So I just wanted to I just wanted to mention that. I mean, I, I hear you on all that. I think, you know, the, the you know, what, what you're communicating makes sense. I think it's more the, uh, the owners of the LLC have to decide they're going to make some choices, right? The choice would be, you know, if they're going to get you more parking, I feel like they got to make the choice on the rental house probably, right? And they got to make the choice on guaranteeing some green space is going to be a buffer. And honestly, I think it would make your customers feel better driving in. Maybe I'm going too much on emotion, but when I drive into a hotel and it's like the entrance is nice, I'm like, okay, I'm on, you know, I'm on vacation or whatever. So I think, um, yeah, I think those are the choices that we just have to make to get you more parking. I think there's a possibility to get that for you personally. I mean, again, I'm just one customer, but. So you're talking about the rental house coming down? Uh, yeah, possibly, I think, possibly. I think, I think, yeah, I need a zoning change, you know, <laughs> But if they need parking and we can make it look, you know, preserve some green space and allow, you know, an entrance and allow the residents some reassurance that the green space isn't going to continue to be eroded with every change. I, th I think there's a lot of opportunities there to design that in a way that provides more parking, provides, you know, some solid green space and aesthetics. Yeah, but the entry doesn't look that well, as it is, I mean, everything. So a Could parking lot where the rental house towards the entryway would be yeah, there's a some, possibility. It's kind of in a hole right now. So yeah. it's built up, I think, a little bit. There'd be some green probably around it. And so that would just be the question in terms of precise design and proportions. What's green? What's not? How many parking spaces do you get? And who knows, maybe if there's, I mean, I'm not in a sensitive position to bid against myself, but I'd like to see what that provides before we even, you know, but maybe there's needing, you know, maybe the wall will need to be moved a little bit. I have no idea. But the question is, where does that green space get shifted around, I think, and how does it, how is it expected to look to residents? And, you know, can we get some more trees, you know, in some spots, that sort of thing. Um, would anyone else like to speak uh, from the hotel? There's not, not very viewable on either side. Um, the housing track is the trees from our side of the wall. There's really nothing out there. You know, no one hardly see it. Um, tear the house down and you know, that, I feel like that we worked a lot on that walk that walk was amazing but that's tearing away a lot of viewable space at first we put a pretty big body of wall and you know, it's not even viewable so if it was dirt or grass you didn't even see it so tearing the house down like an apple thing I'll just give you my point of view too. And I, I have already talked about this to me. When I look at the overall need, I mean, we need parking. And when I look at the overall uh, space there and, and the lot that we have, the best place to put this parking, not only for the guests, but for us, is right where that wall is. And shift that wall back seven feet. Aesthetically, when you're standing in front of the hotel or anywhere on that, that lot, it's going to look exactly like it does today. Just what Greg was saying, you don't really see that green space up above unless you're next door, maybe in uh, on the court level. And then we're going to bring five islands 
down to the level where the where the hotel is and plant trees and those items. So really we're going to increase the green space down there where our parking is and, and we'll have five islands with trees in. The the thing about um, you know taking the house out front, I'm I'm kind of with Nick on that too. I don't really like that house that's in a hole, but it's not part of our lot. I mean, it's not part of the, the hotel lot. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to stay on our, our own lot and not encroach on anything else. So to me, from the standpoint of the location where these parking spots would be and and aesthetically what it does to the overall um, view of the hotel as it is right now, it's going to change very little. And I think it's going to enhance the view from down at the parking level just because we're going to take the green space from above and put it down below with, with trees in it. So, so I like the idea of, of how this, you know, is going to lay out. Can I ask you, when you say it's not, I, I know it's a different parcel. Are you saying there's an, and there's, there's a zoning issue that would have to be addressed, but are you saying there's some other issue? No, not, not really. I mean, the, if, if we, Get it rezoned and you go in hotel commercial, whatever, whatever is going in, and we can add it into this. Yeah, then that's an option for that place. Now, you're looking at it financially, you're taking down a $600,000 house and, and you know, pretty much throwing it away. I mean, we'll give it to Hatter or something, but um, from the standpoint of, of the expense, and, and then you got to come in there and, and fill it in. And um, I'm not, you know, I'm just not. I'm not really looking at that just because it's not part of the hotel uh, lot itself right now. So, yeah, you know, I mean, you, you you could go that route and look at that, but that's, again, I'm looking at what we have right now and trying to deal with the situation we have. I mean, yeah, I, I guess I still, I would like to, we'll see what the council wants to do, but I'd like to see a plan. You know, I'm not saying it needs to be executed immediately, but it, I think the residents are entitled to, to give up this much, you know, 8,000 square feet of green space. I think they'd be entitled to see a plan. And I think also the assumption is that even though it's, whether it's a $600,000 house or whatever, I think the assumption everybody has is that at some point that's going to be parking. Well, it hasn't really ever been in our overall plan. Um, and we've always dealt with the property we have because not necessarily that I didn't think you could ever get it rezoned, but I really didn't think you could ever get it rezoned. So, uh, you know, that's, we've just never really gone that route and never, never looked at that. So, uh, I can't really, can't really speak to it, you know, whether that's even a feasible option or not. Is someone going to speak on what 25 spaces would do? I mean, because I hear some of the council saying, well, good, mm -hmm. you know, that's well, not going to help. Maybe we need just, a plan. I'm not, I'm not going to go into my history, but I've owned three or four restaurants over, over my lifetime. And typically when we look at a restaurant or uh, an event space, the event space is a little different just because you've got a certain number of people, like you might have 300, 500 people. On an event center, typically the parking is two to four spaces per person. So in other words, if, you, if you're going to have 500 people, then yeah, nice would be 250 spaces. Uh, like Dick Schwab out there, his barn, he's got 200, and I can't remember what his occupancy, I think his occupancy is only 350 or something like that, but um, the, uh, on this one here, I don't, I don't know what, Kelly would have to tell you what the typical occupancy is there, but assuming we had something like a 300 person, you would say minimum would probably be 75 spaces, is what, what you'd like to see, that would be the minimum, and 150 would probably be on an average. Now, for a restaurant, it's a little different. Restaurants usually go by square foot, like 200 square foot to, or 150 square foot per person. Um, the restaurant would probably be quite a bit less, maybe a quarter of that. So that's, but the, but that's that's the, that's the way you can look at it from uh, you know, a municipal standpoint. I mean, Tim might have more ideas on, on that than I do, but I mean, in the architecture. Well, you're pretty much landlocked right now. Mm -hmm. So you can only juggle so many balls in the area that you have to work with. 
what comes next after you say you get some 25 spots, the next logical spot would be that house director. Yeah, I something else that you could do that so as far as this comprehensive planning, it's really there's only so much you can do with the, the size even, of the property even, you should have, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if that's an option, I guess they have to analyze it and look at it. But to, to me, <clears throat> what we have right now, this is, this is the best option. The 25 will bring in a little more income for you, which income for the city. Well, it, it, it'll, it'll help the events, which helps the occupancy and, yeah, and you know, whatever increase in occupancy. I mean, I'd like to see us in that 70 to 80% range if we can stay in that range. That's, the events do help a lot with that. So, well, I understand the green space being more visual, which makes more sense up front from Melbourne. That makes sense to have it in the back parking lot. Yeah. I mean, really, it does. Well, right now we're parking our van back there. We've got, uh, you know, there's, there's just not, like I say, if, if we take that wall and we shift it back, I can bring almost anybody there after we get done and you wouldn't know the difference from what it is today. It's going to look almost exactly the same. <clears throat> Except we're going to have to put the island down below and we'll have trees and, well, then if we shift the lights down to the perfect. Is there any trees you could put along there your berm or your driveway to kind of hide that one house? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, we still have we still have um, seven or eight feet back there that it'll be planted out as well. So and the and the trees that are existing there now. Okay. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when we first got this whole the whole um, you stand up here. Sorry, please. Thank you. Put the hotel up. The city council wanted us to turn it around, face the other way, and be back off the far back as possible, so people driving by wouldn't be wouldn't be like a huge nuisance. It was um, one of the things that got talked about. So when we, when when initially. You know, they can't, we wanted it to look, you know, when you drive in, we wanted it to look grand and nice. It just, we were told we couldn't, we had to turn it around. I think Sylvia might have warned that. But people ask us that all the time. Why is your front entrance on the back side? Well, the city council was almost what we had to agree to. We wanted to turn it around and have it face and, and have it nice parking lot as such, but we did. that was how we had to do it. Um, I, I'm not criticizing the orientation of the building. I think it, you know, looks out toward the Canadian side. I think that's fine. I'm just saying you have a lot of concrete when you come in and then that house like down in the hole or whatever. That's the space. Okay. Nice. Well, I just want to just talk about parking so you guys really understand because this really is not about football. It's not even really about events all the time either. Um, and it really doesn't concern the 25 parking places for the beach. We have events at different hours all day long, different sizes, and we get in multiple events. This week, I mean, we should have our schedule with us. I mean, we've got a 15, a 12, a 25, uh, a 165. And um, the main focus for us still comes down to get. Yeah, Supposed to come spaces. And through that, when we have to, we gain enough parking to barely get by most of the time with the offshoot of the big events that are on weekends and the offshoot of the night events. That helps with the offset of parking. But when I and I run almost most of the parking, the first thing I have to do is go in and get a guest tally. I have to find out are we sold out tonight? If we're sold out, I know we're going to have problems because the first thing we have to do is protect all of our guest parking because we have no idea how many times our front staff get screamed at because they're trying to check into the hotel and we can't get a parking place okay and it's not just because of the event being so big because we'll try and make room for them but then they'll yell at us well my friends are coming visiting me my friends can't come and visit a hotel that I'm staying in in the area they can't park 
I mean, it's it's just one thing on top of another. And we try and do our best at finding a balance of, okay, so what is our tally on incoming guests? How many guests have gone out to dinner? How many guest parking places do we think we need to hold so we can block up those other people just to send everybody else away? We also have to tell people for our university events that are during the day or the morning or whatever, please walk over because people haven't checked out yet. So we don't have room for you in the lot. We have all of these different times that are conflicting. Yes, between say that noon hour, once we have checked out and, you know, if they don't check in till three, you know, our parking lot is virtually empty. And most of the time in the morning, if it's during the week, they're getting up early, they're out early. So it's not really conflict. But when we do get those parking things, issues, it's, it's just unbelievable. Somebody has to manage it. So we have to try and hire people to manage. We used to try and get citizen security in, but they're not smart enough to balance everything that has to balance and be courteous enough to the guests to speak to people and actually advise them how to park. Parking is such a deal. We have to tell everybody, okay, you're a big vehicle. You go over here. You're a small vehicle. You're going to park per perpendicular over here so we can get you in. And that's guests. That's uh, events, it's trying to find a balance. And believe it or not, most of the time we come down to three to eight parking places. And then the event starts leaving, we start getting a couple of places and like, oof, we dodge that bullet again. Sometimes I've had people coming in screaming mad because as best as we try to balance it, we are full. I've parked people on the sidewalk next to the entrance because I had to find them a parking place that they cannot believe we couldn't park their car and they had a reservation and blah, blah, blah. And this is even counting everybody's reservations, counting all the check-ins, making sure we had home, but not being able to account for everybody that left and went out to dinner and how many people sneak in into our parking lot. You guys have no idea. Randy here every day has to go through cameras, check vehicles, our parking people, he checks everybody's license plates every day. We pay people to deal with parking. It shouldn't have to be that hard. And I know 25 parking places doesn't seem like it's that much of a game, so no big deal, but it is to us. 25 saves our butts almost every event. It would help us so much. And it would cut down on people uh, just having to perform extra jobs, people who forget to perform extra jobs and set us into a scramble. It's just, it's every day, every meeting we have, it's parking, it's parking, it's parking. Yeah, I, I hear you on that. I think, um, I, I still though, I would like to see a comprehensive plan. I'm not saying that I'm wanting a comprehensive, comprehensive plan that has to happen immediately. Necessarily, I, don't, I mean, I'd like to see that, but you guys definitely have interest in having more parking, and I hear that. But the city also has interest in balancing aesthetics, green space, etc. And it's not like I'm plucking this idea out of the air. I mean, this is what I actually hear people concerned about. Presumably, it was part of the thought process. Otherwise, it could have just been a ton of parking to start out with. So, I mean, that's what I would like to. That's that's what I'd like to see. Um, you know, maybe that there's an overall plan that protects the city's interest, but that the house doesn't have to go right away. I don't know, but I hear you on all that. But I still, I still think as a as someone looking out for the city's interest, I think we just need to see that full plan. Um, and maybe it means that the there is a I don't know maybe there's additional parking where you're wanting it as a as a first step. But I need to lock in that step three or whatever it is, is going to protect the city's interests, provide some green space, et cetera, whatever that might be. I think there are a lot of things that might be, and I just haven't seen the ideas generated. And I don't know, maybe it's my job to provide sketches, but I don't think so. I think it's something that I, I've given that feedback before today. I'd still like to see it. And I think if I can see it, I think we could start the wheels turning and figure out how to solve the issue. I think any way, any way you dice it is going to be perpendicular parking needed on this side. So, and this achieves that with minimal impact aesthetically in a general sense. So, I would just like to see you make some compromises to minimize the encroachment in the green space. And 
I said that last time, but you didn't do it. Which, um, so we're still going seven feet in there. It seems like we could do a few things to uh, minimize that. But yeah, I I don't know what you're going to do out front and feel like we're trying to push them into taking out that house, which I don't know if that's even a good idea. The whole, I mean, you don't really enter the hotel until you get back to that crosswalk. There's a gateway or something there, it might be more presentable, but I think any phased plan is going to have perpendicular parking in this location where they're proposing it because it's a no-brainer. Yeah, I think I think that's a good point. I, the way I look at it as an advocate for the city, though, is I feel like if you give, you know, these incremental changes, then you get to a point where there isn't a give and take because the give has already happened. Um, so that's what I, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I I don't want to say the same thing a lot of yeah. different ways, but it's you know the plan might be to you know as phase one they do what you're talking about. But phase two would be they'd have the choice on the house at some point. But as part of the package deal, then the city would be guaranteed some green space, you know, that it currently is not. I mean, it's, it's you know, it could include, you know, signing over some green space to the city um, and having more trees on it. And then it could leave, you know, if it's a phase two that allows them to add parking if they need it where the house is. I mean, that could be their prerogative in the future. I'm not trying to tell them what to do, but I, I think it's fair, though, to have some choices um, for them to make in terms of these trade-offs. Um, otherwise, it's just the city's giving on the negotiation of green space that they presumably made before. I don't think I was on council when that those details were, were worked out. Um, but that's, I mean, that's what I hear is that people, because I, I that was a question. Do we value green space? in general, and I think to trade some green space in the back of a parking lot for maybe some at the front might not be a bad deal, you know, for the city. But I just would like to see more about that. You wanted to come up to the podium? So last year we came to the table and wanted to turn that green space by the sign into a parking lot. And you guys said, you know, we'd like to keep that as green space. And I feel like I feel like we did compromise in this situation and we didn't push that. I backed off of that right away. Um, we planted trees like you guys asked. I feel like we came to the table and gave you guys, you know, things you asked for. We don't want to say you didn't want to turn that into a parking lot up there. I agreed to that. Put trees up there, I agreed to that. So I went back in the back of the parking lot where no one can see and said, okay, I want to try to I feel like I have you know compromise. We we paid a, a large amount of money for that that house that that lot was on. And we, we can't use it. We, we're not using it at all for anything. So that that was a massive uh, amount of money to, to pay to the to the project to the piece of ground and we can't use it but i also want to say you know the city's asked us for things that we have said yes to we've never said no to the city on anything we, you know they ask us to donate two houses we did those houses cost us you know just under a million bucks we donated fifty thousand to the to the to the uh china park we donated money to the um flowers two two years in a row we we help the city we we help the city in many many ways and, and, and yes we are coming to ask for this parking space to take this green space away and uh we feel like we've compromised and given up on the green space so i agree with you i resonate with you if you saying that 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 is the entrance to the city uh, Promise not to ever want to put parking on that grassy lot. If, if if we ever decide to tear the house down and put that that would be you know something I'm not interested in doing, but it's something you know the future people of 
uh, run the hotel, maybe, but, um, you know, I, I feel like we have done a lot for the city and including the, you know, the revenue that the hotel business is, you know, hotel by Joe tax and property tax. So, this please go for this. Thank you. Um, I just wanted, anybody else want to speak? Okay, I guess you do, Kelly. Yeah, I will. Sorry, this is more, I just want to get a little bit more context. Kelly Murphy, Director of Sales with the Courtyard. A um, little bit more context on some of the things that I mentioned during the last meeting. This is more from a financial perspective, um, but my role as the Director of Sales is to bring in sales and revenue for the hotel. Um, as Greg already mentioned, you know, we've got 140 guest rooms and we've got 166 parking spaces. Um, there's several groups needing hotel rooms and an event space that I've had to turn away for parking reasons and only parking reasons. On average, um, so I want to give a little bit more detail or provide you some more context. On average, the businesses that I've had to say, thank you, but no, thank you, we can't facilitate your group. On average, they would generate about $15,000 in hotel revenue over the course of their event. So you're talking a couple days. Um, so hotel motel tax, 7% on $15,000. That translates to a little over $1,000 per event that comes back to the city and hotel motel tax. Um, when I turn these pieces of business away, they usually go to a hotel that's either downtown Iowa City or down in IRL. All, almost all of those hotels, they have parking ramps adjacent to, adjoining to, uh, very close by um, those said hotels. Um, I will also say those hotels have very good working relationships with the cities in which they um, reside and that understand how important tourism is to their community. The visitors that go to those other hotels, they will rarely find their way to University Heights. They'll visit the restaurants, the coffee shops, the pizza places, and all of the other shops that are close to their hotels. In my opinion, the hotel is kind of the revenue anchor um, for the hotel motel tax here. Um, and we want to benefit all the businesses that are in uh, University Heights. I know there's not a lot, but we want to benefit them. We want to be a good partner and a good steward for the things that the hotel motel tax revenue provides for the city of the University Heights. Um, Shell already alluded to this, but on a daily basis, we have parking. We have guests that are parking in our lots that are not hotel guests. They're not spending a dime mm -hmm. in the hotel. A lot of them are Stella guests when Stella parking is limited. Uh, we've got a lot that are families that are visiting the hospital that cannot afford to spend, to sit, to park in the parking ramp. By the way, Greg probably doesn't promote this, but Greg donates. Donates to the Steve Family Children's Hospital up to four rooms every day for families that are in bad shape that cannot afford to stay in a hotel. He doesn't talk about that because he doesn't like to brag about himself, but he does, but he, he donates over half a million dollars in normal hotel revenue or what would be hotel revenue to families that are coming into Iowa City and University Heights. Out of the goodness of his heart. Anyway, um, kids that are attending sports camps, as Michelle had mentioned, we've got a lot of people that because we don't have big obnoxious signs at the front of our parking lot, because we don't have a parking gate, they think they can come park in our hotel. And we're okay with that as long as we don't need those spaces on that day and at that time. We want to go be a good steward and a good partner. Um, but when we are busy, we have to ask our we ask our staff to park in the basement to carpool. Our housekeeping team, when we're busy, they all park carpool into two vans. They pull in a team of housekeepers that pull in in vans to help us with our parking situation. Uh, so some may think that we are only talking, you know, we want this mostly for football weekends. Absolutely, it's not for football weekends. There's 358 other days every single year that we are dealing with parking. 
and trying to manage the increasing demand of our hotel and our event space. Um, and it's, it's a daily conversation. It's a weekly conversation that we staff, our weekly staff meetings, we talk for 30, 45, sometimes 60 minutes um, just on how are we gonna manage parking? What events do we have going? Yes, sometimes it's weddings, but other times there are six different events happening in any given day in our hotel. And we're trying to uh, gauge and estimate how many people are gonna have, how many cars they're gonna have. Are they gonna park carpool together? What hours are they gonna be there? So it's a lot on our staff and we've got a lot of really intelligent people in this room that I would have to think we can, you know, we can come to a win-win situation. Questions. So what about the 25 that parked there from the university? Are you considering not having that or? You it's can... part of our conversations. Do we try to relocate them to the other property that Greg and Michelle own back on Woodside Drive? That's part of the conversation. We have a waiting list of 50 people, I think. Um, the person that does that part of it, we have a waiting list of people that want to park in our in, park in our hotel. But we're not at a point that we can take on, on those because we're trying to manage and get some parking. Um, well, if you eliminated it, if, if you just eliminate it, right. that it's not. But not, you have not the issue. Have any, come over there during the day. It's well, open then during that time. During the day, it's yeah. It's not the problem. They kind of are not involved. Mm -hmm. so most big events occur at five o'clock in the evening, when they're done with their programs at school, their uh, their jobs, you know. But we have to ask these people to walk over, especially with all the university hospital events that we have there, multiple different times during the week. It's like, well, you have parking there, can you please just walk over and then you shuttle together and you can serve your spaces. And then dealing with this through the winter is terrible. And if it's a resty event, then that changes everything too. Like Rand said, you got women walking around bare feet, icy weather. It's, it's, so it's you'd eliminate it if it was going to help you at yeah, those Yeah, absolutely, and one hundred percent, we would eliminate it. Yeah, that's that's not a question, but that's not what our problem is. And it's not that just the offset of you know saves us either. Because these people, they don't want to go and park in Kinnick. They want to park in our lot. So then it becomes spending off for our hotel guests is what it really is. And when Kinnick does have an event, we have to put parking people in our lot to prevent people from going, well, I don't want to get caught in basketball traffic, so I'm going to sneak in the hotel parking lot. We have to put people on just so we can park our guests and that we don't lose all of our hotel parking to people who don't want to park at Kinnick for the events that all of Kinnick has when they've got track, when they've got basketball, when softball, big things going in baseball, or at the stadiums. It's crazy how much all of the events that they have going on at various times during the year still have an effect on us. So it's it's multiple things. It's this is not about football at all. It's not even really just about events. Yes, we have lots of events, but without the events, that cuts back on our hotel traffic. And then we're nothing because we're not downtown Iowa City. We're not the Riverwalk. And I'm sorry, I can stand up if anybody, but everybody tells me I have such a big mouth that everybody can hear me just fine. So anyways, but um, these are the problems that we run into. And it's constantly, I have dealt with parking more than anybody else here because it has to be, done by somebody who gets it, understands, and can talk good to the guests to create for them. Sometimes, I mean, we're, we're side parking on, we're, we're whatever. We get creative as we can. We have to park on the road going out sometimes. That's, you know, what we do. I guess what I would, I, is our next meeting, the, I assume it's the August the 13th. August 13th is our next meeting. I mean, I, I would like to understand if you can put a comprehensive plan together i'd like to understand the issue tim raised in terms of this the square or the 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 extra feet there um i'd like to communicate it 
before, you know, like right before the next meeting. And I, I really tried to get ahead of this with getting down there right away and looking at things. I know things often just kind of come together right before the meeting, but that would be my preference is to understand, you know, those two things. Again, not saying that you got to come up with a plan that you can execute tomorrow, but I'd like to have a plan that communicates to the residents like where you guys are trying to go. Um, and then I'd also, again, like to understand what, what Tim had asked for, why that didn't happen, what the, what the change would be. That's my business. Can I ask a question of the board? Just one of the things that we've never considered is turning that house. I mean, we, we've joked about it. It's like, wouldn't that be great if we could just turn that into a parking ramp right there? That's exactly what we need. How many board members here would vote for a parking ramp right there? I can't How say. How green space would that take? I can't say. I, I would need to see the plan. I mean, that's what I, I'm, I'm more of a comprehensive plan person. I, I don't know that, that stacking, because when you stack cars, you also deal with, you know, with the neighbors who that seems like, at least Bobby, my understanding is okay with a plan like this, but I don't know if you'd be okay with a plan of multiple levels of cars pointing out. Right. But, but I really am a brainstormer, sky's the limit, let's, you know, but, but I just think where I get really stuck with this is, I mean, it just doesn't seem like I, I know what we're doing right here, but it seems like the rest of it is not really finished and there's not a full plan for the rest of it. And I don't know that I agree with you because I'm going to say this, from what I've understood, and I am not part of the planning Okay, I just deal with activity part of whatever we have going on at the hotel. But from right now, if you look west from the corner of the hotel and you look up and down that lot, it's a concrete jungle, right? It's just parking, sidewalk, it's wall, and then you see, you know, the grass above where the fence is and the big pine trees, right? So it sounds to me like all we're trying to do is move the wall back. And we're actually going to add trees and grass, and we're going to make that greener, prettier, and nicer to walk by and through. And it's not, not going to change the back visual at all because it'll all still be there. So that seems to be what the plan is. Am I wrong? Okay. So, anyways, to me, I think, and if we lower the lights, then that's going to cut down on light pollution, which has been one of the complaints. Um, I guess we never proposed really doing a lot out front because anytime we've talked about doing anything out front, it's like, no, 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 we need green space. We don't want this, you know, so it's, it's not an option for us. This is our option. So, um, and we think it actually helps you to find parking for all the people. God knows how many people circle through university lake suites, our parking lot over there that come down by the lake. They walk through the parking lot. They love the paths as it is. And I just think it would make it even a nicer walk, a nicer experience for these people that do enjoy walking through our lots, do love the yards there, and tell us so all the time. So anyways, it just, to me, it makes sense. The, uh, the good news is the university are putting up a new big parking lot close to the football field. That should take care of a lot of, I think, the parking that we want to make it shorter for them. At least that'll find great folks until they're there. It should help that the should sports take a little pressure events. off of you. Because the sports events will be nice right. because we have to guard from 20 to 40 cars to the sporting event, especially Caitlin Clark was here. Oh my God. If it, if it was a women's basketball night, we had somebody out there and they're like, oh, we didn't know we could park here. I mean, you can't believe how many cars we've turned away. And uh, yeah. I want to talk about some green space. You really need to walk on that sidewalk along that wall. You will not see the green space that's above the wall. That's they're looking at bringing that down behind those trees. And if you drive through our lot now, all of a sudden, University Heights in front of Stellis had the best planner flowers, beautiful. Then you got some competition with us now. You drive around our parking lot, look at our planners. Look at our patio, the flowers are unbelievable. You get the neighbors that walk through and talk about our flowers and our water and put so much time in that green space. And I think 
I don't know how many of you have actually driven around the parking lot and look at our green space, see our flowers, and you look at that wall, you don't see any green space up there. We're looking to bring that down in the after that. Those tiny trees are faster. Oh, they're, 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 they're yeah, telephone Every poles. time we get a storm, we have branches. They're that are telephone poles with the little bushes. No, they're doing nothing. Right. But if you can get those out, bring down the lower flowering bushes and stuff, we yeah. can make that green space if we are. I think it could be advantageous to everybody and address everybody's concerns. But just go look at our flowers. Yeah. yeah. I, I just, we would love to do that. And I'm sure. Are there any more comments or any more comments from the council? Uh, well, we have consideration of resolution number 2423 before the council. Motion. You want a motion? I would like a motion. I, I, I feel completely differently from Nick and Lisa. I think that the hotel has bent over backwards to do things for the city. I hear them asking a simple request and that their main concern is they need more parking and that they have already visited and revisited all the different ways that they could try to accommodate for the parking, whether it would cause a loss of green space or increased it. I think that they've really brought the best option to us. And I think that pushing it off any further is just blame them from getting more parking. If they want to add more revenue for their business, they're bringing business to University Heights or our other businesses. I just, I, I would like to motion that we approve it and not delay this any longer. Okay, there's a motion by Steph. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Doug. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? I guess I would just say, I don't think Stephanie, I, I, I think it was you maybe responding to us, but I don't know that I disagree necessarily with the advantages. And I'm not trying to say that the hotel hasn't done things that you were reciting. To me, as I want to know what the where we're going with this, because we've done this for years where we're doing this piecemeal stuff. It sounds like too, I, I think Tim had identified some specific details that were not complied with. I'd like to understand that. Um, and so yeah, I'd like to see those things and then I would want to, I guess, decide at that point. But at this point, I I would go I, I would I would not be in favor of the the resolution as is. And I agree. I think we got this when this this morning. We got this on the website this morning with the plan. Are we allowing residents to look at this? We made a lot of concessions too as a city staff, and we know that on the last council. So I'm it's not, not a give and take though, trying to support each other. We made a lot of concessions that we last week. And I'm not saying I'm against this, but I'm not ready to vote yes on this at this meeting. I think we give residents a chance to, to look at it. I like the idea of what else are you thinking? Because there is no, there's no guarantee that we've seen that now. I feel Ray like they're saying say this is what we're thinking. The parking is what we need. It's what we're asking for, it's their only ask at this time, is additional parking at this time. And I think that there are some other things involved in this plan that you might want to get in writing rather than just, yeah, we'll look at doing this. Well, that's my question. Is, what is a comprehensive plan? What does that even mean? Yeah. Is, it, is it a guarantee? Is it a legal binding contract? What, what does that even mean? Yeah, I think that would be the idea. Exactly. I think it would be, I mean, you brought up some good points too. You know, like the the bush, if you're going to do bushes on the top, I mean, these are things that have not necessarily happened over the number of years where that green space has sat there, right? And so I, I do think that is get some of those details, get them in writing, um, make it part of the agreement that, you know, is the give and take. And so, yeah, I, I do think that's, that is what we would want. 
how long does something like that take to piece together some kind of comprehensive plan or action? Okay. I don't know what we would intend to do. I don't understand what we're asking no, them for. Part, like, all we're doing is turning the cars back in the region. I don't, I'm not, right now I'm no position to knock down the house. I don't have the time. It, it's not, it's not something I've even thought about. It's, it's not something we're interested in. I mean, right now we're, you know, again, last year I came to one Made the one lot, you guys said no, I'm okay with that. I, and I went, I did what you asked me to do. I went back to the drawing board, I found a way to create more parking. I was literally doing exactly what you asked me to do. And all I'm asking is to turn these cars 90 degrees. The person paid that lot over there. And that's it. We're, I, don't, I don't have anything else, any other ideas. I don't have a comprehensive plan. I don't have any other ideas. What well, we do have checks and balances in place. I mean, you're not just going to rip that house up tomorrow and slap down a parking. I mean, we've got to go through zoning. It's got to come before us. I mean, there's lots of hoops to jump. So I don't think the sky is falling. Right. I, I and, think what they're asking for is additional parking. And I think that's a reasonable request. And we know, I'm sorry, I've got a, I've not a lot of speak here. Um, but we know that if those trees that are we all know they're problematic, the pine trees that are dying, they look like hell. We have agreements with the city that if we take out a tree, if we if a tree dies, that we're going to replace it with, you know, what, two trees, three trees, something like that. That that, you know, if you guys want something, just come to us. We have always worked for you. We have always done what you ask. You know, if, if you want flowers mixed with trees, you want trees with pastas, you want just conifers, a line of new sugar conifers, uh, whatever you want, fluffy, green, nobles, we don't care. Like, you know, like the clips look, like, we do. Every, that's part of our aesthetic, too. You want to put stuff up there that we can look at anything like the whole property. I hear you on that. I think the details matter, though. I mean, Tim Malone has cited two examples of. I mean, of where he's provided a design or an idea that hasn't been complied with when it comes to even where those trees were planted on that lot. And then the, again, with the measurements of these spaces. So I, I just, I would like to see the detail. I don't, you know, I, I trust that you guys, you guys do a lot of good things. And I, I enjoyed talking with Jim about the trees and, and his ability to do these things. I would like, again, I'm not coming to this with just, you know my my interests in play. I'm trying to advocate for this the sense I get from the city and from residents, and and I don't think that I think that I don't think it's too of too totally out of you know in, in space to say that a plan would be what is the goal for what the entrance is going to look like. My understanding is you guys are not thrilled with how the entrance is, and. So if we had a sense of that, if we're going to give ground on literally on this parking lot, like, and if everyone's like, well, you, we think that the house is going to go next, I agree with Doug that it would be a process. And in fact, I'm trying to make that in some, in some ways more streamlined, right? If we had a, a vision of what this, the goal is, not to say you have to be there tomorrow with it, because I, I know cash flow and all those things. I like, I like it. I can't do anything about that for you. Um, but no, I, I mean, I think that's fair for the residents to just see, okay, now we're, we're all kind of coming together and getting on the same page. And this isn't like a fight about, you know, you guys wanting, you know, feet over here and we're pushing back. It'd be more like, okay, this is where we're heading. You know, like Lisa said, I think it'd be good to give people more than the day's heads up to voice your opinion. Um, on the details of whatever plan. I think to Doug's point though, I do think details should be in it. So that's why I think it's premature. I, I think there's a lot of possibility to get your management the parking they need. I just think it you need a little bit more here. Um, and I don't need to wait the entire month to consider it. I hope it's not waiting until the day before the next meeting to consider it. My hope would be we start <laughs> I mean, I, I got down there pretty quickly. We've been talking about it. I appreciate Jim's time communicating with me about it. I mean, we looked at putting the 
the um, sidewalk up above to try to keep green space that way to make a nice walkway. I get that they don't want the stairs, you know, on the other edge of it, but we did talk through a lot of things. And I think we're, we're getting close to what I'm, I'm asking for in terms of just the vision here of the, the entryway. Um, but I don't think we're there. And I would like to know, even if it's something like Tim brought up where you can save a little bit of, of feet, get you parking to save a little bit on the feet so that the, the residents have a little bit of, you know, of some. But you can't even see the green space that's up there. It was a buffer zone. I don't know if you call it a green space, but it was always intended as a buffer zone. We're putting that green space down so it gets better. We get it. I, I think we're yeah. we're being repetitive, but I, I, that's what I'm asking. I think that it, you know, I would assume you guys have a, a sense of entryways to hotels and like how you might want that to look at some point. And if we could do a little give and take now and just have a plan, again, I'm not saying you necessarily have to have the cash flow to execute it right away. I would just like to see where we're trying to go with this. Uh, Jim and I, I, I would be up for talking with Jim about it more. I mean, I think I think there's a good sense of the green space. I don't really have an entrance. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, we're getting into the ozone here because this is all, you know, assuming this house will be torn down and everything will be rezoned. You give us, I guess, add that property to the hotel property and zone it commercially. And, and you know that's nothing I ever figured that was ever going to happen. So, and, and and Greg has always been against it, which I, I, I mean we've never we've never really considered that uh, as a, as an option. Now, I guess uh, if that's going to be an option, well, I guess we, could, we could look at it. I don't know. If you're, you're talking some some major expenses versus well. We're intending to spend on just flipping this parking around. Um, you know, we're probably in the best time of our wedding that we have to put the wall up, but it's going to help when we move it over. It's not going to cost us to go to the tremendous amount of money to do this. So we can probably do this project that we've got in front of us for you know, $40,000, $50,000 versus. And I have a question. We, I'm sorry, but we were talking about 25 parking spots, and now we're talking about changing the gates. Yeah, I mean, this is all this is a this is a history as you can imagine. There are a lot of residents who are feeling like it's it's give an inch. I mean, I've heard this back literally give an inch, take a mile sort of thing. And I'm not here to um you know to to communicate the mistrust and the concern necessarily. I'm here to try to get everybody on the same page. And so I think that can happen. But I get that that's what you wanted and you didn't pursue it. But but you got to look at the you there was a PUD agreement. And that was what that's what status quo is. And so if you get something, you know, if you want something more, but you don't end up pursuing it, that doesn't mean you're necessarily giving is all I'm saying. So it's just a matter of um I just like to see a plan. I'd like to understand the you know, even the details of this that I'm just seeing with these islands. Like that, I, I don't think I saw the islands before. Maybe maybe I missed that. But but there's just I, that's all I'm saying. That's the reason why I would vote no today. But I would be open to figuring out a more comprehensive solution for the future. Thank you. I want to ask Ryan the Melrose uh, project that your engineer is working on. That's going to that's going to impact the entrance somewhat. You know what I mean? I mean, we don't know exactly yet, yeah. but I believe it would somewhat because there's going to be a uh, bike yeah, so there be, uh, and traffic. Yeah, so the Melrose Complete Streets project is planned to um, essentially extend the existing bike lanes that are coming across the, the bridge from Iowa City um, to the west up until sunset. So it would go around the curve on Melrose and over to Sunset. Um, as far as the impact to the hotel's, uh, what I would call driveway, right, or entrance access, um, there won't be like, I guess, I don't think we're planning a whole lot of like landscaping there. There's already an overweight sidewalk, which the hotel put in in coordination for that Melrose Avenue project. 
the intent is that the sidewalk on the south side would all be shifted back and aligned and widened to match that sidewalk that's in front of that empty lot where the hotel's at. So that's, and then the curb has to be widened out to allow for that bike lane. So we worked with Joe Sire on that. Okay, you got that. Or if we donated, we donated a big portion of that ground to the city so we guys could do that. Yeah, so it's the, the right of way has already been donated to the city. Yep, for that, where that sidewalk's at, it's the, uh, kind of between the entrance and all of court. So, okay. so if you can imagine that just extending down on Melrose, that's the intent with that Melrose kind of Lake Street's work. And then, um, I see. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. Does I, council want I, to discuss? I think, I think you do. Forcing these people into putting that lot into the mix is just walking them into a firestorm. Want to add 20? Five parking spaces to a no brainer approach to doing it. And if they just, I'd vote yes for it if they just reduce the thing two feet and more focus on planting. And it's. I just want to add you all know that we perpendicular park. You all know that we are perpendicular parking to gain these 25 spots that we're asking for currently anyways, right? What we're trying to do is make the flow through the parking lot safer, just make it better and make it permanent. That's all we're asking for. It's not really a great change. Yes, the, the landscaping goes up a little bit, but we're bringing landscaping and we're bringing green space into the parking lot, into the concrete. We're actually giving up a couple of parking spaces we could gain in order to do that as well. But we are trying to do our best to pr provide a simple permanent solution to something that we're already doing that does not offset everything. And that's all we're trying to do. It's it's not that complicated. It's actually very simple. Okay, does council want any further discussion? I just have a quick yeah. question. Would you guys be considered or willing to consider the extra two feet? Okay, let's talk about that. I we have a two-way dry lot. Like I said, every parking structure that is in this city or of the cities around it, I should say, is 60 foot inside to inside. You're talking about having 62 feet for your trucks. Because and even more than that, because if you go when you have a truck you overhang the side toward the hotel. And you can still overhang the sidewalk. So that's 64 feet. We're talking about making it 62 feet. Trucks always hang into the drive by. That's that's sort of I got 18. And you you have an enormous truck. Everybody doesn't have it. Yeah. So I got, 18, I got 18 foot on this side for a parking spot. 18 foot on this side for a parking spot, right? Well you had You'd have 16 feet on the side toward the wall because right. your truck, cars, all of them can overhang two feet. Right. That's so 16, they, so 16 feet on that side, and then on the other side, I have 18. You still have 18 foot. I'd love it if it just didn't shift it over, but I don't know if Ryan right. would think. I was just going to look at Ryan and, Ryan and say, what does Ryan too, think yeah. of that? <laughs> shift which part of it? Even allow them to go to the 16 feet on the other side. And then, yeah. then it would be pulling it back four feet. So yeah. then they're only going in three feet. Uh, I mean, I, I guess, hang on, Greg, just to sort of talk through that. Um, I think that that was an option I was trying to think of last summer when we were having this discussion. The, the only issue that I was seeing is like, okay, if you're sort of visualizing a 16 foot stall on the right or the east side of the that mm -hmm. lane, there's already existing curb and gutters. There's yeah. storm sewer uh, structures that are and in so that curb if, line. If that remains, you would have a portion of it that's a 22 foot dry bar, right? Which is still permissible in a lot of municipalities. Okay. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, like uh, you know, the pseudo design standards that we usually go by is 24 feet. There's reductions you can do if there's more than 30 percent of the stalls are against a curb, which these would be. You can reduce the lane. With or the drive out with five foot. So, yeah, I mean, you know, there's 
there is probably some give and take you could make there, and it would still function, especially for a circulated part of the pot like this. Yeah. So we have 24, 18, it's it's the same distance you just over it just seems like 60 feet this right you're overhanging the curve on one side but if you slip that in if you go through there all the cars on the other side I feel like Louise is looking at me. I, I mean, that was a comment I provided to Greg also. Original. I did, yeah, originally. Yeah. Is, is, that to, is that we could do that 16 foot length, okay. but uh, I was proposing just building the curb at five inches to make sure that, you know, a lower sedan wouldn't be inhibited so they can pull forward so you can maximize your drive aisle. And then you still have your seven foot of sidewalk. Which remains five foot for walkable space and yeah, with a 16 foot long which is parking so I I hear I'm willing to compromise at least and work with us. Does that change the uh, you know because you're ad adopting a plan and that plan currently doesn't have that in there? Yeah, we can use it. but you just say with that or something. With adoption, <clears throat> with adaption by I don't know, city probably, engineer. It's probably more a question for Ryan than me. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, what's the question? We say, well, I, I think what I'm hearing is, I mean, plan for the council is the one that's up on the screen. Yeah, the site plan. If it's going to be amended, I'm assuming you're going to want to see that. But I don't. Know. I mean, and I don't know how the council. Yeah. Mr. Council. Could have I mean, yeah, I guess that. I would put that to the council probably. I mean, if if the developers are agreeing that they would pull that back at council's request, then I we just wouldn't issue a building permit probably until that is changed. And if there's a yeah, what's change, what change is going to apply for the building permit? Right. Yeah. So so a lot of times we would do this with um like a site plan can be approved sort of as like a general, like this is the template of what we're doing. And then you'd have a construction set submitted after that part of it. And so that's the, sort of the final stamp and approved for a building yeah. permit. So we, if there's minor things like that, we could make those changes. If, if there is a concern from council over the landscape layout or the plan from the landscaping and, and uh, you know, Nick has mentioned wanting maybe to see more detail on what trees are replaced or, or this or that. Um, I, I'll note that the landscape plan has a general note on it of the, what's submitted here. And it, it basically says any any trees or shrubs, uh, plantings that are impacted, killed, or are already dead would be replaced. So um, I think the intent is that whatever was there or, or whatever was planned with the original PUD plan would be replaced and or, or uh, in like kind is how it's put, you know, similar species planting. So, but, but, you know, if there's more desire from the council to see more detail on that, um, I probably want that updated before approval of that plan. Just it's not quite as simple. You know what I mean? Does that, does that make sense? I, I would prefer that council's comfortable with the landscape plan before approval and it changes more than what's yeah. up there if we're just talking that 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 the stall width length is pulling in two feet i can do that review and, and according with terry at a later date i think that's what i'm and under the understanding that we would be voting on tonight is what has been presented minus or give or take two feet one direction or the other yeah, and as you said, based upon the engineer of record seal and signature, and that's when you yeah. 
do that. Yeah, and I guess just for council's knowledge, I you know we asked MMS if um, the additional paved area was going to impact. They have underground storage detention um, and stormwater treatment. Um, their calculations were based using a higher curve number than what the uh, expanded pavement is today under this proposed plan. So the detention in the parking lot, um, they've stated on the plan set here, also underneath the utility sheet is is uh, unimpacted or covers this new layout as it's proposed. And I have an email into chief fire chief uh, from Iowa City with an auto turn exhibit and for him to let me know if he's got any concerns over this new layout as well. But I just sent him that email today. So, so what would be so bad about voting on this at the next meeting and having it having something having some transparency or to use that word? You mean just letting letting the drawing the two feet see different? what the changes are and get it all necessary? It's up to the council. It's up to the council. Okay. It's up to the council. I don't think it's necessary. I think we can vote on what's presented tonight with the two foot exception. I just think it's dragging things out longer and longer. Uh, any other discussion by council? As long as the uh, hotel owners are in agreement to the Condition to you know the adjustment. Um, I see no reason why we should not. Okay. What's so. the reason that we should? <laughs> if I make that up, I mean, what's the reason that we should approve this tonight? Tonight, yes. I'm not saying heaven. I'm saying tonight. So they can get started on it for winter comes. No, yeah. so they can start. Getting additional parking ASAP. They needed it ever since they've been there. I mean, why not give it to them when it's also construction season and they can be working on? Oh, okay. Oh, why don't you go ahead and read? Yeah, if the council wants to, as I understand, Understand it uh, through the um, site plan that's been presented and subject to further revision to be approved by, by uh, the city engineer. And then I, I've just added that language to the resolution. So it says that it's approved, subject to further revision to be approved by the city engineer. The resolution already says that it won't, uh, there won't be any written instrument signed until it's approved by the mayor, city attorney, and the city engineer. And also the resolution also says that the uh, building for that won't, yeah, be, won't be issued. So if, if the council wants to proceed in the way that uh, making this adjustment, I think you could do that tonight if that's what you want to do. And I email you. That would that would not include details about any plantings. That would just be if they gratuitously wanted to do that. I think that's correct. Right. Okay, so that's your motion. motion. And that's your second. And is council ready to vote? Any further discussion? I would just like at the least the planting has to be part of the plan. Have it a plan that the city can look at. You know, I, that would be my position. Sorry, I could just throw it. We add that to the uh, amendment. Well, before we vote. Before we vote. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I depend on the. I, I'm just looking at it. You know, and I just I I think potentially. Plantings could do a lot in turn in, you know, it, and, and I'd like to get feedback from residents about the tree, you know, plantings versus losing green space. But again, I'm one, one council member, so it's where I'm at. So there is, as you like, said, there is a landscape plan. That would be worth asking. Asking. This a panel. We haven't, we probably haven't had it very long, right? But uh, there is a landscape plan sheet. Uh, included with the submittal, uh, it has a it has a schedule like a list of plants, um, species that they're proposing. Proposing, um, I have not gone to the site and like walked and said, "Oh yeah, like this tree's dead, this tree's not," and these are proposed in between gaps or something. Um, 
I've not taken the time to do some some sort of on-site review like that. Um, so it's kind of what I'm saying, like, you know, if council has a concern over the amount of the plannings that are shown or displayed, like I mentioned, there, there's a blanket note to say that they would replace any that are dead or dying. Um, but that's, I just wanted to be known that I, I didn't like go out and review that there's not going to be a gap if they only plant the plants that are shown on the sheet. So, so I can see taking an exception to the landscaping plan and the approving the dress so they can move it at the back. Okay. Any further discussion? And, and that's because I don't, I know how parking lots are built, and I don't see what else they can do. So, I mean, I don't know what getting public input is going to do other than find people that are going to say it shouldn't happen. <laughs> and so, you know, it, it, I'm ready to vote. Stephen, what, might, what, what, it might give some goodwill to people, I is, is what I would say. So, I'm not looking for people to say, I don't want this. Right. I know, be, I know. I'm just just saying. being clear for yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Steve, if we vote on this change and if it's accepted, and then we come back and want to add requirements for plantings, what basis does the city have to then dictate, I guess, these additional terms on the the hotel? Um well, there's I mean if we bifurcate them, I feel like the, you know, usually the Kind of give and take would happen at the same time. I like the idea. I mean, in a sense, but I think that it it would seem like the next phase would be coming in and dictating, you know, plantings potentially. I think you're right. I I mean, to answer your question, I still think there's things from some of the original uh, agreements that have that have not been done. So, my my guess is that the council, if it wanted to, has some enforcement um, avenues along those lines and. Maybe that those landscaping details could be part of that discussion. Not a, not a great answer. Oh, but that's, I, that's what I was curious about. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, roll we'll call vote. John? Aye. Herbal? No. More? No. Schroeder? Aye. Swales? Aye. Motion carries three, two. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll go on to legal report and Steve, any questions for Steve? First of all, thanks for taking a lot of time and getting things done for me and I appreciate your help. Uh, city clerk report, Mike. Uh, I don't think I have anything to add. Um, we are still working on the public information request, and as soon as I have that sent off, I will send a copy to council too. So that's right. Thank you, uh, City Treasurer. Now, John's John is listening. He does oh. not have a microphone. He's in Chicago right now. Oh, he's just he's, sitting there he's, grinning he's, at it. <laughs> he, he has he has he has been listening. He's got he's got audio, but does not have a microphone. Oh, um, can I he, for it? Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you. There I'm is sorry. one addition to the warrants. Uh, there's a bill from Think Iowa City, which is our contribution back from the hotel motel for $22,626.83. That came in after the uh, updated. Warrants. Okay. So thank that you. would be an addition. And he sent an updated. He did send up, uh, but that's warrants. still lacking. This there. is still, yeah, this one okay. came right after that. Is there any? Any objection to paying the bills with the one addition? Hearing none, the warrants will be paid by unanimous consent. Thank you, and thank you, John, for stopping by. And uh, since he can't talk, so we'll go to our police chief report. Our new police chief, his first meeting. Congratulations, Chris. Feel free to pull. The, yeah. Feel free to. That's the definite goal. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to pull the podium up. Too. Oh it goodness. is adjustable. It hits the Bible. It hits the Bible. Okay. <laughs> uh, Welcome. Obviously, obviously, everybody got a report. I'm not going to insult anybody. A written report to them. Everybody's been um, This is more about FaceTime with people 
in this room because we're going to see each other for the next number of years. A um, couple of big things here. Uh, Chief Kelsey did participate in the rag directory ride as representative from the Tracy Knights. Uh, he has for several years. Uh, great publicity. I suspect that you will continue to do that if I can't get it off this week. Um, <laughs> Which is possible. Uh, the other one is uh, we have finally been compensated for uh, work that our officers have done for the university uh, to the tune of twenty nine thousand, a little over twenty nine thousand uh, dollars, which brings a total of just a little bit over thirty five thousand dollars that we brought back and forth with the university. And the last thing is we are getting a ton of positive feedback on the cars, the appearance, the officers like them. Uh, we will tweets with everything, uh, but uh, publicly, publicly, uh, we're getting a lot of big feedback from it. So, thanks to that. That's all I've got. Eddie was telling me, Officer Eddie was telling me that other officers from other communities are admiring them also. <laughs> At the Chiefs Conference, they were very well thought. Uh -huh. uh, we, we had a Chiefs Conference uh, just uh, June and, and yes, there, but then officers from Iowa City, Coralville, Johnson County, North um, Liberty. I heard, yep, everybody thinks uh, they're a very attractive car, and they are. <laughs> so, the only concern I would have is I, I get nervous almost that people I heard this from a resident that they wouldn't know it's a police car because it's not very dark, you know, on the sides, and you can't see it like it's uh. Depending upon the light you're in, yes, that can come into impact or can can impact it. Um, have you seen it with the lights on? I haven't. No. Oh, I have maybe AC. afterwards we can take a walk and, and and kick them on. And I think I think that it puts you to to yes. Yeah. You, are they in the windshield? Like, what are the lights? We we have got them in the mirrors, the front grill, uh, the side, the back with the side glasses. And then the back ones, and then above the passenger side, uh, you know, it's very close to the seat. Uh, and you're really putting them in the in the driver's side as that tends to be. Occasionally, we'll get a little bounce back. So if you get pulled over, you're going to know it's. You will know. Yes. No. There is no question <laughs> in my mind. So. Yeah, I know you are. I mean, you should show them afterwards because one of the officers came over to my house to show me, and I said, I want to be a criminal in university. I have to a leather in the back and, and plexiglass between. I was like, oh my goodness. It, uh, they're, they're very nice cars. We should show this well. Yeah, that's great. Any questions for Chief? We'll all see you on Friday night. Yes, Thank yeah. you. Uh, Louise, I did want to add yeah. that uh, I have received an update from Kent Ralston from the yep. MPOJC right. that he had been working on that sunset and Oakcrest uh, intersection pedestrian crossing walk option for us with the the new crosswalk sign and he's going to be getting that report to us next week he said so he's been working on that and that's in the works i mean i see mike we missed a little edit we didn't put chief Acres. It is. Oh, no, it is. Kelsey. Yes, I know. It that is. was in the first one I sent out. You printed an early one. My updates caught it all. Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. Yes. Steph well, I'm just copying Stephanie, it from the first. Definitely let me know within three minutes. Of <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, this is not good. Okay, but you've got it correct. It is. Correct. Yeah. It's, okay. The template very good. is correct. Thank you, Steph. <laughs> And okay, we'll go to finance and uh, you had something else. Was I there... just, we already approved Lawrence, so it's not, um, I, I was basically just explaining the Swisher track um, bill to sustainable landscape solutions. It's in my report. I think they did a really good job. They, um, we walked it, uh, I walked it with, with Virginia and a couple of residents and there was some work to do yet in June, on June 12th. But they really must have worked hard between June 12th and June 30th because they took a lot down. I think it looks great. The challenge now, especially with ticks this year, is that the 
grass and stuff on the trail is causing people to pick up a lot of ticks. So there is interest in kind of weed management or mowing on the sides. Um, there's a resident and I who are planning to use our weed trimmers to try to keep that down. If that is unsustainable, I did get a quote from Sustainable Landscape Solutions to mow and put herbicides down. Um, you know, it would be hundreds of dollars, but not thousands of dollars. So we'll see what uh, we can do with our weed trimmers maybe first, but I might come back next month if it's not something we, we can keep on. Uh, would that be a one-time thing or a maintenance program? I think it would be like a lot of things, maybe the first time would be a little more expensive. They went through with their big mower and really nailed the sides of the trails. And then I think after that, it would be maintenance spraying potentially. I know they had suggested if we're going to spray that we would go and talk to the bordering landowners to make sure that everyone's comfortable with herbicides being put down um, in that amount, because you know, it might be kind of a little bit more to really follow the trails and kill things alongside the trails. But um, I think the big takeaway, I don't know if you guys know much about ticks, but they really do come up out of the grass, I guess, more than I appreciate it. I was thinking more from trees, but supposedly um, they come up from the grass. So that that would really help people. And that's what people, I hear people about getting their pets, you know, getting ticks on their pets and things like that. But I'm glad people are using it. I just think we need to do maybe a little bit more to get it set. But thanks for approving the warrant. I think it was a good that's project. Great. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, we'll go to streets and sidewalks and you gave your report report and then you have some few more things if uh, you if you need yeah. to review any of them uh yeah just just real quick i would just touch that in the warrants list um just in case anybody didn't get to read my report early yet, there was a payment for um ll pelling for the paint striping um that was the payment that i had john pull last month because we didn't have a chance to review that um so um Took a look at the quantities that were submitted. It's probably under what's completed. So uh, we went ahead and approved that for payment is $8,058.13. And then uh, George Street Cold Sack repairs the intakes were replaced and the payment was replaced uh, down on that cold sack. Uh, finally, that was a very long process. Um, I don't have an invoice from Lynch excavating yet for that. And then Monroe Street, we have a pay app on the, that was on the warrants list. And that was um, for $15,102.15. And that's essentially everything except for the uh, retainage amount, which we'll release once we do final acceptance of the project. Uh, I think at this point, we're almost down to just accepting the sod after the sod maintenance period. So we're just coming up pretty close. So uh, the Monroe Street one is almost complete. That's all I've really got. I just want to make sure everybody's aware that there's you've been busy with man it looks, there. it looks very nice too uh did you have anything doug uh no i'm gonna ask brian did they use a narrower stripe when they painted these they look narrower for some reason they look kind of fuzzy to the, 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 the long lines yeah you know, on the center lines it just um, looks like you know, it, should it should still be four inch. inch. Yeah, four inches is what they should have been before. Okay. I don't know if it's possible. Maybe they striped it wider at one point, but uh, I can check on it. It just looks really weird. Okay. Well, I, I thought you went around and looked at some tree branches too, and you've yeah. been starting to do that. Yeah, I still got a few more. Though. I'm going to have to make midnight was a good spring cheer. I've got to put them yeah. on people's doors and let them handle it. Violation. I got Pat Eagy helping me on that, so nobody gets saved. <laughs> okay. Let try to look at my <laughs> trees. Oh, uh, thank you. We'll go to Tim with building zone and sanitation. And uh, I actually had a report, and there was uh, just a note that. The think Iowa City has twenty thousand dollars budgeted to help us if we want any planning support for the trails or Stitcher track or the university property. They're willing to help us figure out. I think you've been working with them on that, right, Nick? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you. Any questions for Tim? Then we'll go to e-government. Lisa, you submitted a report. Thank you for that. And uh, any announcements? Well, you can say it. If you want. Just a reminder that uh, to this Friday is our police chief reception from five to seven at the Marriott Courtyard. The Hawkeye Room and hope everybody can come welcome Chris and thank Troy at the same time. Thank you. And is there a couple other? Yeah. Oh, you do. Uh, Zoning Commission is meeting tomorrow night. They are going to take uh, the results from the public forum that was the end of May and want to put some things together that the council would ask them to comment on. So they're hoping to have something to put together that they'll possibly send before next month's council meeting to let people know on those issues they ask for their yes. address. Um, I actually have two personal privilege things to mention that have nothing to do with the city. One is um, my band is playing Friday at the log cabins at Upper City Park as part of Folk Arts Friday. So if you're free from three to five, that's a place to avoid, you know, because <laughs> we'll, we'll all be there. The City of Iowa City Recreation Division is doing that. And then um, this weekend is the Project Green Open Gardens, and our house is going to be one of the ones on that. So oh, wow. there's like 21 gardens, I think, on it. So I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of people coming. And that's anymore. Saturday and Sunday? Saturday, 4 to 8, and Sunday, 10 to 2. 10 to 2. So, yeah, that's Project Green. Okay. Yeah, he's very involved in Project Green. So, yeah. Lisa. And my wife, Lisa, is too. So, anyway, Thank those you. are all going on. Oh, I thought you were raising your hand. Are there any other announcements? Is there any objection to adjournment? Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned by unanimous consent. Thanks, everyone.